tell you that there is a very small change. So I will complete right now the 10, 15 minutes of the introduction that I, I couldn't complete this morning, and then you will present your work. And the talk of Federico, who was uh, planned to be after yours, will be tomorrow at, uh, at 12. Okay, so this is okay, but uh, we are going to see this in 10, 15 minutes. <coughs> so we ended this morning with this, just mentioning this part of the about genetic background, so the, the following slide, so we were talking about this, that the, the variability that, or the differences that we, we see in genetic background, different strains of animals have different phenotypes. We were mentioning just the two examples that, this is one example in our lab, and this is an example of a knockout that was published in a field that I was working in a few years ago. So. Now, the, what uh, we can discuss a bit regards epistasis. So, epistasis, when we met, <coughs> when we talk about epistasis, this is the interaction between non allelic genes, especially when one gene affects or suppresses the expression of another one. This is a very simple example <coughs> in which we have a flower that has a color that is given by a compound that is called anthocyanin. And uh, we have different alleles for, for this uh, color, could be purple or other colors. But if the enzyme that produces the intermediate is mutated, then the color is white. And independently of the type of allele that we have of the enzyme P, then, and this is uh, epistasis, and many of the oh, <coughs> sorry, of the mechanism or, or, or the pathway we are we normally study let have, have this problem, no? So, which is the cause of this? We have gene interaction, modified genes that affect the, the phenotype. We have genes with incomplete uh, penetrance. And then, the, in some cases, a gene could be, this is the point, could be incurred, but phenotype is not observed. And why is this? Could be epistasis mm -hmm. or epigenetic effect, or just modifier genes imprinting their different, different reasons. So, the, the story is that phenotype, what is phenotype, is actually the interaction between genotype and environment. And this results in a phenotype. So, different Genotype could result in a, a genotype could result in different phenotypes, and the genotype also is modified by the environment. So, uh, and, and this results eventually in uh, in differences in the in the phenotype. So this is something that we have also to consider when when we work uh, with animals. So I suppose that you all know this story. Okay, so Gregor Mendel. Uh, that uh, just uh, created or discovered or just formulated actually just the, the recombination laws. So we have characters that are dominant and characters that are recessive, and then deployed individuals have produced gametes. We have two copies, and then they segregate uh, as it's indicated here. Okay, if we have heterozygous uh, pollen in this case, then we cross heterozygous pollen by, by heterozygous uh, pistil, let's say female by male, and then we are going to have this proportion that this is something that we all should know. And then other, other character is just independence, in which if we have two loci that are separated, and then I will come later just to, to the idea of distance between genes, uh, that we measure this, in, we can measure this in base pair, but this is physical distance. But for this type of things, we measure in centimorgan, that is recombination distance. 
if we have characters that are distant, uh, I think that I will explain later, uh, to, to be independent, they, they should be uh, 0.5 the, the recombination efficiency. So, meiosis, that is the source of variability, you, you already know this, as I was just to mention and to remind you that we have a recombination in, in the first uh, meiosis process in which we have exchange of uh, DNA of uh, genetic material between the chromatids. Okay? So, this is what I... I mentioned, let's say, the, the type of recombination. We have the crossing over that happens during meiosis. We have independent assortment of the chromosomes during uh, meiosis. And then if we have random fertilization, then we have in the mice, uh, we, we were talking about uh, 40 chromosomes. So this is 2 to the 20, elevated to 20, potency of 20, mm -hmm. uh, multiplied by 2, to the potency of 20, we have this number of recombination without considering crossing over. So each individual is unique. Uh, so Centimorgan is a genetic map unit of length. Two loci are one centimorgan apart if recombination events are found in 1% of meiosis. Okay? And these roughly correspond to one million base pair. Roughly. It does it is not in mice. Okay? It, it is not strict in the sense that in certain parts of the genome in which recombination is more frequent, the distance that is a distance of recombination could be shorter in, in base pair, or if a region in which recombination is not so Frequent, then this could be a, a greater distance. And then this is a, an important point I wanted to, to mention, that it was also already mentioned by, by Stefano in one of the questions. So the three R's. So the three R's are replacement, reduction, and refinement. Okay? So what does it mean? This is, let's say, uh, they are not just definitions, they, they are just uh, how animal research is uh, using animals, how, how to use animals, so we, if, if we can, we should replace animals. So what you mentioned before, that you wanted to use cells, if possible, instead of using animals, we should use the experimental, you should perform the experimental using cells, and this is the, the idea, just not to use much animals, so to reduce as much as possible the use of animals, or not, not to use as well, unnecessarily, animals for experimentation. So in some cases we can replace our studies with cells, in some cases it is not possible, so in the cases in which it is not possible, all, obviously we cannot replace with other technologies. But we can reduce and refine still. What does it mean? Reduction. So use methods which minimize the number of animals used per experiment. So this is not only a matter of statistics. It's a matter of experimental design. OK? We, we are going to see later in the next uh, couple of slides how to obtain the minimum a group size to perform an experiment in which we can obtain statistically significant results. And this is also a very important point. But here we should optimize the method in which we do the experiment in order to obtain as much as possible from the experiment. As we were discussing before with, with uh, Francesco Alfredo when I asked him, okay, what about other organs? And he said, since this experiment is complicated, costly, and difficult, then every time we do an experiment, there is a bunch of people taking the pieces of the animal to do many studies from a single experimental setup. And this is reduction. So we can perform the experiment in such a manner to take advantage of 
many aspects in addition to, to do its, um, let's say, the, the proper experimental approach to avoid repetitions or to have the right controls, because if we don't have the right control, we don't know if the experiment was done properly or not. So this type of thing. Refinement means using the optimal methods to, to minimize animal suffering and improve welfare. And these are the three R's that you will listen very often when you are doing animal experimentation. For example, in the Italian, uh, if you have to do an experiment in Italy, you have to present a protocol to the Italian Ministry of Health explaining how you are applying this concept. And if it is not well done, then your project is refused and you can, is rejected, and then you cannot uh, perform it. So be very careful uh, with this, okay? So this is just the explanation. Uh, I took this from, directly from the website of the three R's. So I, I don't want to, to read this, but essentially is the, this is the long version of what I, I mentioned uh, before. So here this is important. You can have replacement in two categories, full replacement or partial replacement. So in some cases you cannot avoid using animals, but maybe you can do part of your experimentation using other systems, other models, uh, to avoid using so many animals. Reduction is, well, I have already mentioned, so this is more or less the, the idea is to reduce the number of animals and to maximize the information gathered per animal in an experiment. So what I mentioned before. So if, you ca if there is a technique in which you can do microsampling of blood, then use it. And this will result in you get some blood from the animal, and then the animal is still alive, and you can analyze this animal in a later time point. If you don't use this type of technique, for example, this is a very simple example, then you have to kill the animal to get a lot of, or a lot of blood, because your approach is not good enough, you don't have the sensitivity high enough to analyze small volumes of blood. So you need to kill the animal to have enough blood. And this is, if you can avoid that, it should be avoided. Okay? Refinement, well, avoid pain, suffering, distress. So this one idea is you need to be well trained to do the experiment. So if you are well trained, you will do the, the experiment in the proper manner, very, very systematically, avoiding pain and suffering from the animals, and all the animals will have the same uh, treatment, minimizing variability, minimizing thus the number of animals you may need to get the statistical significance. Okay? So the, all these guidelines you can get from here. These are the right guidelines. This is the, the, the website, yeah? So uh, here, uh, th these are right guidelines also. Y they are very important when you have to publish an, an experiment, uh, such a paper, because they, they contain all the information necessary. They, they ask you all the things that are necessary to, to publish a, a paper with all the details that you should have considered in advance before starting your experiment with animals. So don't arrive to the very end to realize that you have done the experiment wrongly and you have to repeat the experiment. So before doing the experiment, just try to check whether you uh, are uh, adhering to, to all these guidelines in order to publish your experiment. Because if you don't do the experiment correctly, at the moment you send the paper, it will be rejected. And this will mean a lot of work for you because you will have to repeat the experiment, a lot more of animals because you will have to use m many more animals, a lot of resources, money, time, uh, for this. So try to avoid this uh, and be smart. Yeah? Okay, this is more or less what, what I mentioned before. So. Uh, the experimental design is important, statistical analysis is important, and how you report also the experiment. So 
this, all this you will find also in the RAD guidelines in the site, this NC3R. And many journals, many, many of the journals support the RAD guidelines. It means that when you send papers to any of those journals, you will have to, to stick completely to the RAD guidelines to publish a paper in this journal. So this is the reason I am asking you, check before starting the experiment. Do not verify whether you have stick to the to the guidelines of arrive at the end at the moment you have to publish because it is too late. Yeah. So this is the aspect I wanted to 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 show or at least to discuss. So how we determine the size of the group we are going to analyze. So we have many variables: age, sex, genotype, background, genetic background. So, experimental variables, variability between, let's say, the different techniques as I mentioned before, uh, and then we have some variables that regard just uh, previous experimentation and the type of test that, that we use. So, an experimental, good experimental design should be unbiased. So, if possible, we should randomly allocate the animals so the experimenter should not know whether the animal at the moment of treatment or analysis, whether this will be the animal that will have been treated or is the control. So uh, the, the, the experimenter, the, the person should be blind if possible to the, to the type of treatment that received the animal. And then you should power the, the experiment in such a manner to get a statistically significant result with the number of animals, the necessary number of animals. If, if the animals, the number of animals is too small, you will not get statistically significant. If the la number of animals is too large, obviously you will get statistically significant. But you will do work that for nothing. Because maybe if you do the experiment with 30 animals, you will get statistically significant. But maybe you will have, uh, obtain the same results with five animals, with 10 animals. So you are using a lot of resources, a lot of time, a lot of animals that are not necessary. So by this reason, all these things should be controlled. And then the normal significant level of the, an experiment that is alpha, that is 0 0.05, so whatever, statistically is less than 0 0.05, then it's good. This is just a convention in, in which, let's say, uh, we have this error that is 5%, and then the power is 1 minus beta, that 0 0.8 is normally accepted. You have to do two-side analysis, uh, and then calculate the effect size and the standard deviation that you, these are, are, are the data that you need to calculate which is the power or not, uh, and the group size of an experiment. What it is well accepted is this software that is freely available, uh, and you can da download it, so you put here, and you calculate you, 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 the, if it is to taste, the effect size, and all the other things eventually the effect size you can calculate put in here, which is the expected mean of group one and the expected mean of group two, okay, which is the standard deviation. This data you, you may have in a pilot experiment or maybe you can get from literature or maybe you have already done this experiment in your lab and these are parameters that you already know, okay? So in, in this case, I, I plotted here the, the difference in which you have one mean that is 100, the other one that is 150. So the means, let's say they are very well separated here, and here you have the, the 5%, and here is the, the, the power, okay, in which you have error type one and type two. And, and this is here more or less the scheme. When the means are very clearly defined and you have very, uh, let's say, low standard deviation, then the number of animals that you may use per group is about four with this. So if you do with three, it's not enough. If you do with 10, 
you are using six animals for nothing. Okay? Six animals per group, so it means twelve. Okay, so it means a lot of animals, a lot of work, because if you do an experiment with twelve animals, you have to analyze twelve animals more. Okay, so have in mind this. Then if Instead of being 100 and 150, now it is 100 and 120 with the same standard deviation, then the two means are very close one to the other. So now to have results that are statistically significant using the same parameter of 0 0.05 and 0 0.8, the same number of animals in each group, then I need 17 animals per group. So just by changing, this is just uh, an example that uh, I was playing, so I put to, to show only. By playing with this, changing the mean from 150 to 120, increases the number of animals from four to 17. So this is the reason this parameter you should know before doing an experiment. Because if you think that at the beginning of the experiment, your mean is 150 and the, and the other one is 100. So you start your experiment with four, but at, at the end the result is this, you will not have statistically significant difference. But maybe you will have a biological difference, but you cannot see because of the, the wrong uh, strategy, experimental strategy. So this try to use as much as possible. And then have a look here, if you have always the same parameters, but here instead of 120, you have 115, then you need 29 animals. So five units in the mean resulted in almost double the amount of animals. So this is just an example. So try to have in mind that if the means are very close apart, you first, will be, uh, uh, they are very close first, will be very difficult to, sh to see differences. Then, if you need 30 animals to see a difference, can you be sure that this difference will be a real biological difference? So will be biologically important, let's say, the result that you are concluding from the analysis of, 20, of 30 animals with the mean, uh, differences in the mean that is minimal. So this is important on how you uh, design your experiment. Maybe you have to do uh, another type of question. Okay? So that's it from my side. I don't know if you have questions. Then we have the presentation of uh, questions.